it. You're in it. What's going on, guys? We have a very special video for you today. We are out on the lake that the world record bass was caught. We're in Lake Biwa, in the middle of Japan. We've been spending the past couple days traveling around, and we're closing out our four-day weekend with a pretty sweet fishing trip. So we're going out with a Japanese local guide. He's been fishing this lake for 20 years. So hopefully we get on some nice fish today. It's the time of year to catch numbers, not necessarily big fish, but I'm excited regardless. My main man, Dan, is behind the camera. He might show me up, we'll see. It's uh, two Marines out here catching some big bass. See you out on the water. Ohayou gozaimasu. Going on these sorts of trips, I always start the day with a really strange mix of emotions. I'm super excited, but I'm also super anxious. I just don't really know what to expect. I don't know, really know what we're gonna be doing fishing-wise. I don't know if we're even gonna catch anything. I'm not sure what the guide's personality is gonna be like. Are we gonna click? Are we really gonna rub each other the wrong way? And really, I try and focus so much on fishing, so much on filming that I honestly forget to enjoy the day sometimes because these days being in the Marine Corps I just don't get the opportunities like I used to so I have this laser focus and sometimes I just forget to take in the amazing scenery really realize the fact that I'm fishing on the other side of the world and just remember how blessed I am to be able to get to do any of this in the first place really it's just it's just exceptional to get to do this at all. Just pulling up to spot number one. Whole lot of bait. We're gonna be fishing pretty darn deep. This water is really clear. Fish are just kind of sitting, probably on the bottom, somewhat suspended in this bait. So we're gonna be fishing slow. A lot of finesse techniques. Let's see what we can get. Early morning on Lake Biwa, there's a strange stillness in the air. There's really no wind. The water is completely glassy and calm. The only thing you can hear are just some cicadas singing to their heart's content in the background. But the stillness of the water and the air leads you to feel like you have to whisper to communicate and make you feel like you have to move slowly about the boat in order to not spook fish when in reality bass in 30 feet of water would, they would not notice really anything you were doing up that far. Additionally, there's that tenseness that comes with early in the day before anyone's caught anything, that everyone's just so focused on getting the skunk off the boat, landing that first fish, that no one really says anything. It's just kind of accepted that we're all focusing on landing that first fish. Not yet. I'll get it in a sec though. That's where I catch this 10 pounder real quick. Yeah, I mean it looks good. You got the you got the current coming over top of the rocks. Yeah, it's Sean dude? Good one. It's a nice fish, man. There you go. Woohoo! Yes. Nice one. Grab left by the mouth. 
That's pretty. That's real pretty. It's the same strain as Florida, you said, right? Yeah. It's pretty similar nice. to Kansas, too. So this is real, real slow fishing. Yeah. Current's kind of moving left to right. Dan just got that bite, just barely dragging it on the bottom. How deep did you say it was here? How deep did you say it was here? 18. So over there, it's probably a little shallower, probably like 12. Right, you can even see bait getting skipped up on the rocks. Oh, look how little he is. <laughs> Come here, dude. Oh yeah. Not uh, not quite the same size as Dan's, but you know, real cute. Thank you. Really cute little guy. Another one. Another one. Yeah. They biting. Tiny ones are biting today. Ooh, buddy. <laughs> Another giant. Mm -hmm. Thanks, buddy. Let's go, uh, let's go find Grandma. These little ones are real cute. Another little one. Yep. <laughs> Small girls only. I got it. Slowly, I'm slowly gaining, going up in the world. Yeah, I'm making those gains. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to do for you, man. I'm trying to help you out. Yeah. Over the next hour and a half, we continue to pick through little bass after little bass at this spot, enjoying the action, but really having hope that we'll get a chance to entice one of these larger fish that we keep hearing about to bite. I'm telling you, man, one ounce at a time. <laughs> yeah, dude. Oh. Barely hits it. Just a little tappy tappy. Uh oh. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh we are off. Look at that. New species. Beautiful. Oh, it was a weird feeling hit. Oh, Dan's hooking up in the background. It's coming up. That ain't bad. Yeah, it's bigger than anything I've caught.
Okay, there's the next part. Yeah. Reeling it. kind of slowed down now that the sun's gotten fairly high the water's pretty warm and the fish are real sluggish so we're moving from spot to spot fishing real real slow picking at these fish hoping we're gonna get a real nice one here soon just taking this guy and I'm throwing it right on a grass edge there's a grass edge it's about 12 feet of water thrown into the grass pulling the bait out I'm trying to run along that drop off, I'm trying to entice a bite. We spend the next five hours casting, casting, moving from spot to spot without a single bite. Our guide was trying his damnedest to put us on fish, but they were just absolutely not cooperating. And it just goes to show that even for someone that has fished this body of water for 20 years, spending almost every day on the water, sometimes the fish can just elude you. And <laughs> that is part of the allure of fishing is not being successful every time because it just constantly, it nags at you that, what was I doing wrong? Was I doing everything in my power to cause these fish to bite? Or was there something else I could have changed? Should I have changed my lure, my line, my angle of approach? And it's just, it keeps, keeps you wanting to come back for more and just try and learn something every single time you're on the water. Wind's picked up a little bit, caused the water to get a little bit darker. We're kind of changing up the techniques. Right now, we are throwing a chatterbait. And that dark purple, that black tail, should make a nice silhouette in the darker water. And that dirtier stuff, purple normally does pretty well. Maybe entice the bite with the a little bit of flash, that little bit of noise that the chatterbait puts out. Oh man, well we broke that streak. Back to the small size though. Oh, oh my god. Look how cute he is. Must have been uh, my average size today. Tiny. Hey. As we slowly came towards the end of the day, I started to accept the fact that I probably wasn't going to land a giant largemouth bass. And I, I started to take in the beautiful scenery around me and started to think of the history of this area. In the United States, our history barely dates back 250 years, if you're not counting the Na Native Americans. In Japan, People have been fishing this lake for thousands of years, and I realized how naive I was to think I could come to this lake without any knowledge of it, and even with a guide, do something substantial in just one day of fishing. There's so many people that must come to this lake on a daily basis with hopes of catching that a fish of a lifetime, and they come up shorthanded, and I'm, I was no different in that fact. But this country, the landscape, the water, Taking it all in is just exceptional and it, it reminds me on why the Japanese are such a proud people because this country is truly something special. If there's been one thing that's been consistent in my entire fishing career, it's mother nature humbling me over and over again. 
I get to a point where I think I have some semblance of an idea of what's going on, and Mother Nature will smack me upside the head and remind me that, no, stupid, you don't know what you're talking about. And it's that humble reminder every time that I go fishing that keeps me wanting to come back for more, wanting to learn more, and just spend as much time as I can out in this wonderful outdoors. All right, everyone, that is the end of the day. You know, fishing, you're not always gonna catch a 10 pounder every time you go, but you'll learn something. It was a great day out on the water on Lake Biwa, the lake where the world record largemouth bass was caught. So me and Dan learned a little bit. We got a little bit sunburned and we had a great overall time. So if you guys liked it, today's video, make sure to hit that thumbs up button. If you have something to say about the video, leave a comment in the section below and I'll be sure to get back to you. Appreciate you all so much for watching and I'll see you in that next video.